Okay, I don't, <laughs> what do you, I mean, I don't know, what do you guys, like, want me to talk about? I don't know, like, this, do people have questions? Because, I mean, I, I mean, I know a bunch of stuff about it, but, like, I'm not, like, God or anything, you know what I mean? So, it, I mean, if people have questions, I could try to answer the, to the best of my ability. Hi, Taylor Livingston. I love that last name. That's so fun. I don't think she heard me. Hey, but I have I, a yeah. Hi, Queen. It's Looking because, gorgeous as always. Thank you. It's because, like, YouTube's not really like my my usual jazz. So, my question is related to your rates. Like, you know how like you send a media kit over if you're gonna yes. pitch someone, and then do you do you keep your media kit and your rates separate? That's my first. Yes. Question. Oh, never, never, never. I, do not I, put I them in put them together. But I figured I'd ask because you know yeah. maybe in the YouTube world. But my rates page, I just like. Like, I, it's, like, I kind of know where to start because it's, like, kind of the same thing as, like, freelancing, I guess. Like, I do a lot of freelancing, but I don't take, like, I've never taken a paid deal for YouTube. I mean, like, I get free clothes, but, like, that's not the same thing, obviously. Yeah, but it, it is to, like, an extent. You know what I mean? Extent, it's still, yeah. Um, oh. Like, gotta pay for college somehow, so, like, it's, it's getting time. Uh, yeah. So, that's, like, my one question is, do you change your rates for every brand? Do you let them approach you first and say, this is our budget? Like, I don't even know how to approach, like, the rates page. Like, it feels rude sometimes to be, like, I expect money, here's my, here's what I charge, but I also know you need to be straightforward, so. Right. Give me your insight. <laughs> well, um, so, what I've learned is, one, do not put anything that has to do with dollar amount, money, what you will accept, like do not put that in your media kit. Like that is like, like strictly to show yourself like off you're and right. everything you've done. Um, which I'm sure, you know, if you're talking about it, you know what it is. Um, so based on, this is just what I've like learned this, it could be different per person, but based on what I've learned, check like Unfortunately, we're in like the day and age where number equals power. You know what I mean? I know. Power equals money. So if I was do okay, like like I did, like I did something with Lululemon. They have like millions of followers. But if I did something with Joby Tripods, they're obviously not a multi-million, if not billion-dollar company at this point. So I'm obviously not going to be charging that much money for like a smaller company. Yeah. Also, what I've learned is integrated sponsorships and like dedicated sponsorships should be different pricing. Like, pricing. So like if, if an, an integrated sponsorship, like most likely they're going to say talk about the thing for one to two minutes, which I don't know if anyone has done an integrated sponsorship before, but like that's probably the easiest and cheapest option that most smaller companies have gone for, at least for me. Yeah. Um, or like a dedicated sponsorship is like, okay, so like I did, perfect example, I did my workout routine, but I made it surrounding the, like one of the Lululemon challenges that they did, whatever, they asked me to make like a video about it. And that was like a dedicated sponsorship. So like the whole video was about working out, was about the okay. challenge that was going on. Or another thing I did, uh, I did, oh, I went shopping. I took my roommates on like a shopping spree at Lululemon in, I don't know, like September or something. That was like a dedicated sponsorship. Like the whole video was just that. Just that. Or if you're doing, so like then an integrated sponsorship, say you get, you know, like makeup wipes, whatever. Like I don't really use makeup wipes, but like if that's your thing and you approach or get approached by a makeup wipe company and they're like perfect example of people who do this Maggie McDonald and Gretchen Garrity are like the CEO of the integrated sponsorships yeah like they will talk about it for one to two minutes and then that they get their money or whatever they which want. I get that yeah. seems organic sometimes like I don't know necessarily- to me, it's like if it's a clothing haul, fine. Like, yeah. that's but, that, but that's you though. Like, that's your yeah. brand. It would, it would, it would be very not weird, but like Understood. not in my realm if I did something like that. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I really, I think it, it really just depends on what you want to do personally. And other people have different opinions on this, like money wise, whatever. But like personally, I don't like 
at least right now, I don't really want to promote a product that I know either A, I don't use or B, doesn't align like with what I want to do. Like, I mean, ever since I put my business email, like in my, in my Instagram bio, like you guys know, you get all those like random, like, I'm not going to do that just for like, like, what's the point of that? Then that makes me like less selective. You I think like code for 10% off to buy yeah. the product and you promote it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. Favorite. That's not the vibe. I feel like being selective is more attractive to brands, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like they want to see, oh, we really need to push to get her or we really need to push to get him. And that's where the money comes in. Okay. It's like they will give you more so you take them. If they know that you have such great like representation throughout other brands, like a really great thing that a lot of people forget to put in their media kit is like a testimonial quote. So like in my media kit, I have a testimonial quote from Lululemon. It's like when a brand sees that they're like, oh shit, like that's a big ass company. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that if, cause you've done sponsorships before, right? I feel like I see them on your Instagram all the time. So maybe reach out to your contact there and add that to your media kit. Mm -hmm. Like that's a, something that I just like thought would be a great kind of addition. It's like when you apply for a job, it's you're literally right. the same thing. You have a referral. Yeah. So people know that you're a reliable person, gets the job done, makes great content. Like you do. So it's not like they're lying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would go to your like closest content, uh, sorry, closest contact that you I make. Like I just need for. to hop on board with it as far as YouTube goes. Like, yeah. So close to 10K. I'm like, all right, now's the time because like on the blog and like on Instagram, like I'm seasoned with that kind of thing. Like I get it, but I'm like, YouTube just feels so foreign to me in that sense. Well, yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta do what, what works. Yeah. Also, you know? Lainey, did my stuff ever go through? Did you finally get it? No, I need to talk to you more about it later. Oh my God. I, I, I like checked all these things. I was like, okay, I get, I'll find a way to make this work. We're going to talk about it. We'll talk later. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I did that answer their question a little bit. Laura, maybe a good one is how um, to make a media kit and what should be in it. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I like my mom, like she's a graphic designer, so she helps with that kind of stuff, like for me at least. And she, like we like downloaded template off of like one site like she bought it it came with like part of when I like when I bought my actual blog template you could buy like a media kit and a rates like template that came with it so we like started off with one of those you can just like so easily make it off of like make it from scratch from yeah. your um like just by looking at one but I always like I'm mean, this is just I don't like, list out brand I've ever worked with, like, put some select ones from, like, different areas, because, like, I work with some, like, regular trendy clothes, some activewear, some prom designers, and I also try to talk about, like, freelancing as well, because some people don't necessarily, like, some companies don't necessarily need you. Yeah. But they need freelance for their website, and, like, freelance money, freelance pays, like, I don't know if people, like, know that, but, like, some freelancing deals, you can be, like, racking up cash, because they just need a blog writer for their site, and so, like, that's a really good thing to put on your thing, too, and, like, fake it till you make it a little bit, like, I never traveled with a brand, but on my media kit, it says, will travel if you need, like, because, right, like, we ought to, you ought to make yourself seem really professional, you say, like, offer the kinds of things that you would want to do, even if you don't have experience to show for it. If someone asks about that, you can be so straight up with them and be like, hey, like, look, I haven't done this yet, but it is something that I'm willing to do and talk about. And maybe you don't pay me to do it. And we work on a basis where like, it can work for both of us and it's mutually beneficial. Whereas like, you need a little bit of help and I need the experience. And I think brands are really understand that, especially at our age, like people want to be able to help you when you're a college student. Like, I know that sometimes brands are turned off by like, you being a college student because they don't take you seriously, but when you take them seriously and you show them that you're serious about what you're doing, they are willing to help you because you're in school. Like, play the school card to your advantage. Like, when I was going to New York Fashion Week, I was like, I am a student, and so that is why you should let me come, is because, like, I, this is, like, a huge period of growth, and people are like, oh my god, you're a student? Like, we're willing to help you because it's not competition, really, at that point, you know? Like, you're not, 
taking someone's job up, like, you're still a kid, so people are, like, willing to help in that sense, I think. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I can share my screen and show you guys an old version of my media kit. It's not what it looks like now, like, so that the numbers are a little off. There's, like, there was a, yeah, it's just, like, an old recovered file, because I have it on my external hard drive, so, yeah, it's, it's not, this is, like, not a completed one. I just, fa like, found it in my recovered Photoshop <laughs> documents, so, I don't even know what's on here. Oh, Miss Taylor, you disabled me from sharing the screen, so I can't share it. Okay, how do I do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, hold on. I think if you go to participants or something like that. Participants, um, up more. Hmm. Um, maybe if I make you the host. Oh, but I don't. I don't know if that will like kick everyone off or. No, 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 no. And then, and then you could. You make me a co-host. Co-host? Um, yeah. Oh, I, God. This is I don't so... see that option. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awkward. Let me go into security. This might be a security issue. Oh, security. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, allow participants to share screen. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. Let's go. Okay, tell me when y'all are good. Oh, good? Okay. I think we're good, yeah. Oh, gorgeous desktop. Hold up. Share. Ah. Oh my god, do you guys see? Okay, so this is my cover. Just says some things I do. Because I also actually go to school for musical theater. Fun fact. So yeah. Um, it's my about. You know, college student, as Miss McKenzie said, very important. Just a couple, you know, fun tidbits, whatever some social statistics that are off now, but that's okay. Some fun little pics of me. This, some fun demographic moments, YouTube and audience. I also recommend doing, showing some videos in here that like kind of talk about whatever your life, link them, examples, make sure they're linked, channel. Always put the watermark as you can see over here. Insta, my engagement. Engagement is really good. Um, followers, obviously, audience. There used to be uh, something else over here, or maybe there is, I don't know what's actually in the real media kit, but this, there is something here, I know. Uh, just Instagram collaborations that I've done. Little example of what, you know, what I did. This one was great, Lululemon. It got like 14,000 impressions. So like, it's always great to add the numbers. Like I said, number equals power. Some partnership collaborations that I've done in the past. Again, little example of uh, what you did for them. Like, um, what was, like, life is good. I did like a campaign with them. Amazon, I did something with Amazon Prime Day for them. So it really just depends. Again, brands I've worked with, obviously this is not, I am not from Threads Magazine, whatever. This was where the Lululemon quote is. It's just not in this one. Then let's work together. Partnership email, Instagram. Fun little picture of me looking happy in Chinatown. And that's pretty much it. So cover, overview, statistics, YouTube audience, Instagram audience, someone like Mackenzie, you have like the blog, right? No? Yeah. Yeah. So like you could put blog there or add another thing if like people here have a blog, partnerships, collaborations, whatever, brand testimonials. Um, and then uh, your final just like let's work together type of thing. So yeah. Mine's just like two pages. Like mine looks more like a... It's like a resume slash like, I don't know, there's so many different templates. And I yeah. think like, depending on what you're doing really depends on like what your media kit looks like. Or even Definitely. like there are some companies, like if I pitch them, like I'll change aspects of it because I want it to like be more appealing to that company. And I think that's important too. You know, like you wouldn't submit the same resume to everyone necessarily. You would switch it up a little bit. So depending on that and like who you're working with, so what you want to get out that brand, like what your goal is, depending yeah. on what like it looks if, like, I guess. So. Like if you're working with like a food type of company or whatever, food, beverage, anything, like you're not, like you shouldn't be showcasing, oh, I work with clothing. Like you should showcase something that kind of emphasizes that side of you a little bit more. Like, yeah, I, I was going to say exactly what Mackenzie was saying. Like you wouldn't submit the same resume and cover letter to every single job you apply to. It's literally just the same thing. You're just marketing yourself, but it's like more of a visual marketing yourself, if that makes sense. 
So, yeah. Um, I have an idea for, like, the group. Maybe for those of us who have media kits or are, like, in the process of making one, we could, like, in the next few um, Zoom meetings, take turns throwing up ours. And, like, before we send it to any brands, have everyone, like, see if there's any mistakes, see what we should add. And then, like, even if you're, it's not, like, your turn to go, you can still, like, learn um, and update yours kind of, like, as we're doing that. That way everyone, like, kind of is working on it because I feel, like, a little overwhelmed by the whole thing and, like, stressed out because I don't want to represent myself in, like, a way that's not professional kind of thing, but I don't know what, like, the industry standards always are. So I don't know if that's something you guys would like, but we could do that. Okay. Um, when did you guys make your media kits? Because I'm still like kind of small, so I don't feel like I'd be partnering with any anyone any soon, but I also like don't know. Because I only have like like barely above five hundred subscribers because I just started in like eight hundred Instagram followers because they're pretty much all my friends and my sorority. So like when did you make I'll let Laura go at first. She looks like yeah, she I don't, don't something. No, no, no. I was going to say, I don't even know. Okay, um, so for yeah, starters, you you're never too small to start acting like you're big. Like, I know that sounds kind of weird, but, like, if, if you don't take yourself, like, if you don't act like you're a big deal, like, other companies aren't going to they're going to go, oh, this girl only has 500 subscribers. That's how they're going to think. So just because, and you have to remember, I'm sitting up because I feel like I look stupid right now. But I think the other thing that's so important to remember is, like, even when I only had, like, 2,000 YouTube subscribers, like, in one week, I could make 200 sales for that company. Like, that's a, to a company, that's very good a per, that's a huge percentage of the audience. So what's awesome and why companies like smaller audiences sometimes is because they have a way more connected audience. Like their people are, they're loyal, they're trusting, and they're really going to take that word. So even when you start integrating sponsored content, people are going to be like, oh, well, I've watched this girl forever. And I, I always trust what she says. Like she's recommended this and it hasn't failed me. So it's never too early to start your media kit. Yeah. Are your stats going to be a little bit lower? Yes. But it's just important to highlight the things that are that much bigger. Like maybe if you have 500 subscribers, but 250 of those were from the last four weeks, you'd be like, look, I had, I had a 50% growth in, or I mean, whatever. I'm not good at math, but you know what I mean? You have that much growth in that short amount of time and companies are gonna be like, oh shit, like that's some huge potential. Like, you know, sometimes just throwing out those smaller things is really important too. Um, I probably made my, I had like taken many deals before I ever had a media kit and those were like companies that approached me. And then when I was like, finally, and I've pitched tons of brands without a media kit. And I'll just, in my email, include a couple of things. Because I didn't always feel like I need a media kit. There are still days where I don't include it because I'm like, it's just something quick or, you know, like it's not that big of a deal. But I don't think it's ever too early to start having one. But I will say like once you have like a few, like once I had three um, companies like under my wing, then I could put that on my media kit and be like, oh, well, here are three examples of companies I've worked with and that this is the kind of collaboration I've done. So. Okay. Also, Canva is a really good, if you like don't have anything, Canva is obviously free and they're really helpful. My first media kit was through, I made it through Canva and then I like showed it to my mom and she was like, well, I'm a graphic designer, so this looks like shit, so I'm going to redo it. And I was like, okay, so now it's like redone and it's like really, really pretty and perfectly, you know, like symmetrical on the sides because that's what she likes, but yeah. (laughs) Um, one other question I had was how often should you update it? Because those demographics are always changing in the stats. So I'm not sure if anyone that has one wants to let me know, like how often you kind of, I don't know, go in update. So like before personally for me, like if it's, I just like per kind of per company, cause like even your engagement rate can go up, which like I know is a big thing that at least for like YouTube and Instagram stuff that a lot of companies have like looked at mine because mine's like a little higher than normal at least from what I've seen and Instagram engagement on that was huge yeah and I think that was that this is old so I just like I don't know I've always had a pretty high engagement on Instagram which is like kind of what you could like leverage 
<laughs> toward Your engagement. Like, do you pull that stat from social blue book or like, where do you get that stat from? Oh, I had my, uh, I had my like social media manager do it for me because I, I can't add and subtract. Okay. So yeah, he just did it for me. I couldn't yeah. But social blue book is really good. I was going to mention that because, uh, when I was doing stuff with Natalie Barbu, I don't know if any of you guys like are subscribed to her, but she always mentions social blue book like, all the time. Yeah, yeah definitely a, a good resource for help. But I would say, honestly, just per, just per brand deal, just like take a, like, a little look. Like obviously if your YouTube subscribers go up by like 6,000, like update it. Yeah. But if they go up by like 500, like, uh, whatever. Like I, I just, I tend to pitch brands like in bulk. If that yes, me too. I have a list literally right yeah. now that I'm going to do so next like, week. For instance, like in June, I'm going to upload every day to YouTube and it's going to be my back to school series, which may seem really early to some people, but my mom was like, sis, like moms are, they're the ones doing the shopping. They're the ones like purchasing the stuff and they want to know now. So I was like, all right, that's what I'm going to do. So if, for instance, if I was going to go pitch for like back to school content, I was going to pitch Ikea, Bed Bath & Beyond, like all these companies, all oh, 100%. Companies, I would like sit down and I would make sure before I send them all on the same day that I update it, like look at the statistics and I'll go like periodically. I don't really like pitch one brand on Monday and then the next Tuesday decide to do it. And then Wednesday I decide to send another. I usually am like sitting down doing it kind of all at once. Like maybe I'll send like 10 in a day. So like because I have back to school content, I like reached out to some brands was like, Hey, like, let's do some outfits together. Or I'm planning on showcasing, um, outfit ideas to wear for recruitment. Like I would love if you sponsored this video and I, you sent some clothes over for me to naturally like organically incorporate into this video. And yep. then I would update it before then. And I don't know about you guys, but like my demographics don't really change that much. Like I'll update, especially as far as like how many subscribers I have goes, how many followers, but like, as far as like my brand audience, like 85% women, that stat hasn't changed for like two years for me. I always yeah. have 85% women follow me. So it might not be exactly like there's a chance it could be 80% right now or 86%, but like, I don't go and like, look at that all the time. When I like change a stat, it's usually like followers or an engagement rate. Like the really ones where I like brands, brands want to know how many women are following you, but like, they're not, that's like, they're not pressed on that. So that's not like a stat that I regularly like am double checking, I guess. Yeah. I don't even put men. I literally just put female. Oh, see, mine says yeah. 85% women. And then I also they could, have, do the, they could do the math. Like they, I don't need to they put can do it. Yeah. I like keep one. I don't like break up my statistics like Laura did. I just have it oh, like all yeah. generalized. So under like I have um, brand audience, 85% women, 74% are from the age 18 to 35 and 94% are in the United States. Like I leave those three statistics. So yeah, it really just depends like per person. I don't think one person has like a specific um, yeah. thing, but I did want to say just because Mackenzie kind of brought up pitching to brands, something that like my like manager dude has taught me, which is like a big thing that people forget. Um, hit them on every like resource you possibly can. DM them on Instagram, DM them on Twitter, hit up their LinkedIn, email the company, like do literally everything because A, your name is gonna be out there and B, you're gonna get a response from someone at some point. So although it takes like a little time, like I've had... um. I've had like brands or companies, whatever I've DM them like a little cold nonchalant DM. And then they answer in a couple days or some answer within the hour. Like it literally just depends, but they literally have a person like that's a job to answer DM. So they'll answer it at some point. If someone could get princess Polly to say yes to me, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. They're, they're an interesting bunch. I'm like, please, please, like. Oh my God, you do on. so well with them. Oh, I would love to watch that video. I just feel like. I would on, honestly, guys. I would hit them up on like LinkedIn and find the people that to, work there. Because I, I started that. off with the email and then they didn't answer the email after I followed yeah. up like three times. So then I was like, all right, time to go to Instagram. So I Instagram, I'm like, hey, I contacted the email that you have linked in your Instagram and no one answered. So what do you want me to do? Yeah. And they were like, they sent me like a link to the form, which is like, I hate filling out like forms on websites. No one ever goes through those. And I'm like, no, that's like. <laughs> no, I would honestly, LinkedIn is like my secret weapon. I go to the company and then I go to people and then I search in the keywords influencer or PR. And then I literally just, every single person that works somewhat 
in that. Do you and have then they might, or you just get their contact. Info? So I will connect with them and then send a, a, like a message. So really funny story. This, like, this just proves that LinkedIn works. I wanted to do something with Target for kind of like back to school, same thing you were talking about, a um, little bit different, but whatever. I go to LinkedIn. I go to the people that work there. The head of influencer marketing is friends with my aunt. So I was just like, I know, so random, right? But you never know. And LinkedIn shows that connection. So it's like, you already know, you bet your bottom dollar. I texted my aunt and I was like, hey, queen. So I see that you're friends with X, Y, and Z. Can you like let them know that I like hit them up on LinkedIn? And so she did. And then I'm talking, I'm like currently talking to the lady right now. So it's like, I think LinkedIn is like a literal secret weapon that is like such a powerful source because you never know who you may know that knows the person you need to reach. So I, that's like my big, biggest Especially advice. depending on where you go to school, like adding your professors. I mean, yes. I go to fashion school. So like, obviously going to fashion school kind of helps like, uh, like me being in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. So like, I make sure to like add my professors and they'll add you right back most times. Like most of my professors know what I do and are like willing to help because definitely they know everyone. Like most of them didn't start teaching until after they spent 15 years in New York city working for someone. Right. So, <laughs> The vibe. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way too. Yeah. I'm so to add I something really like that. So I really like your idea about the back to school thing. And like one thing I'm working on that's kind of similar, it's like you kind of have to assess like what point you are at in your life and then find that topic that relates to you. So like I think I'm one of the only people in here who's in post grad. But like I'm going into a professional role, which means I need to build my professional wardrobe. So it's like I'm gonna reach out to Loft and I'm gonna reach out yeah. to companies that are like similar to them. Reach out to Express. Now I, I have a younger audience, and all of you are following me, right? Or you know, I hope so. But like, if you're all following me, eventually in a couple years, you're gonna be in that exact same phase where you need to build your professional wardrobe for your professional job. So kind of like assessing what kinds of like life events and stuff you have happening. Like another one that I have is I'm going to be the maid of honor in a wedding coming up. And a lot of like wedding brands or like, or wedding like specific brands are really like looking at how the pandemic is affecting wedding season. Mm -hmm. And so they're like transferring like a lot of their summer stuff to now being fall and they're pushing fall stuff early. So like, that's just one thing to look at too. So kind of assess your life and see like what you can play off of to your strengths. I like that. That's really good. Queen. That's what I thought. A lot of like, I did so many prom collabs this year, and obviously I'm not in high school anymore. But like, I assessed that my audience, like a good 50% of my audience at the time, was still in high school. I mean, it sucks that prom got canceled for them, but like, for the sake of that, because I know that that's like what they're engaging in, that's what they like need. That's the kind of stuff they were looking for. Like that helped. And honestly, I'll take any excuse to like dress up in a designer dress. Like I don't know oh. about you guys, but I'm like, oh shit, sure. And I also think like even, even though I wasn't in high high school anymore, but like working with like prom designers and like dress designers in general, like even if you weren't, I mean, I'm in the fashion industry, so obviously it's not the same for everyone, but like you know who Sherry Hill is. Like, regardless if you are in the fashion industry or not, if you were Lululemon, you're like, oh, I know who that is. So, like, it's also a good way just to, like, build up your own resume, your own media kit, like, is taking stuff like that. Like, if it may not necessarily align with your current stage of life, but it aligns with a huge amount of your audience's stage of life, that is, can be just as beneficial, too. So. I think so I have a question. Oh, okay. okay. I was going to, no, I was going to say, does anyone have any other like questions? Or something? Well, I know Taylor's mic's off too. So if you want to go, you can. Okay. Well, your mic's not. okay. So one thing I was wondering about the media kit, going back to that. So I personally, I don't have many contacts directly with brands because I work with a couple media agencies that will like send me collaboration opportunities <laughs> as they like come by. So like you have, you know, Amazon, Lululemon, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so like I've worked with Doritos like really randomly, but like I have no relationship with them other than like the one sponsored post. So like I probably won't put that in my media kit, even though they're a big brand, but then I've worked with bigger brands that no longer fit my brand. So it's like, how do you pick the best ones? Cause I used to be like big Lily Plitzer, Vineyard Vines girl, and they both sponsored me at one point, which are like big brands, but like I wouldn't even wear them anymore. So I mean, I think it's worthwhile to put one of them in, like, I do because people, like, at the end of the day, like, people will see that that's a huge, 
multi-million dollar company. So like, I don't think it's not necessarily, like, it depends. So like, I keep on mine, like, for instance, Yogalicious, smaller company, but I love them. I've worn them for years, far before they ever did. And I want to show that I work with activewear. Then I have like L'Oreal, for instance, like shows a little bit of beauty. I have DSW on there. I worked with DSW once, but you bet your bottom dollar, every person in the fashion industry knows who DSW is. So does it matter that I only worked with them once my first year of blogging? No, because no one else knows that. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like on your resume when you like put the best things about you, but you don't mention that like maybe you're not that patient or something. I mean like, yeah, I get it. But also like you're supposed to like you're selling yourself at the same time. So like put the big deals. Like for instance, I'm right now like in the works of something with Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond's like a huge company, right? Like for the college lifestyle, like that's obviously like a good thing to have. But do I have, just as you were saying, that's like influence her, like messaging me and being like, Hey, apply to this collab. Do I have a direct contact with them? No, I don't need, I wouldn't even know how to ask them to do anything further than that. But do I feel how they add it? And like, when I put those, he'd be like, Hey, like, I just need that back to you. Yeah. Cause like, just seems logical to me. <laughs> but I do think, I do know what you're saying when it's like kind of hard when you're like moving and transitioning out of those things. But I do still think that it's worthwhile to, like, include something from all aspects that you're interested in, like, some sort of experience from it, I guess. Like, I leave, a, I leave past partnerships, and I have, like, eight that are their logos are pictured, and then underneath it says, plus 100 other brands that, like, I've also worked with. And out of those eight that I picture their logos, those are ones that I really want brands to see and be like, oh, she worked with them. So. I have a question, actually. So... Like when you are just starting and you haven't really like worked with any brands before, like wh what do you think is like a good thing to put in a media kit to like showcase that you're still like valuable? Oh, like I would put open to partnerships and collabs or open to like something along the lines of like, don't say it like this, but like, like receiving like even free clothing at, at that point. Right. Like, that, that's still, you've technically still worked with them then. Like, right. you, don't, you don't need to get money. Like, I feel like clothing, especially if it's, like, a nice company, too, is equally as cool. Yeah. 90% like of the deals that I take are not paid. It's just, like, a shit ton of clothes, which, to me, like, that's fine. Because, because then you she puts that into her content, which pays out in the long run. And yeah. it's, like, okay, so I know not everyone's a fast fashion supporter. Am I proud that I support fast fashion? No, but do I wear it because I'm broke college student? Yes. So do I share that honestly with my viewers? Yes. Does, and like, I may not be getting paid from those things, but they will let me use like my affiliate links with that. So like those, the amount of money that I will make from affiliate links, like far surpasses like what they would ever be paying me for that. Now, I think that even if you don't have previous brand experience, like on my media kit, at least, I'll, like, run through it. It's two pages. I have about me, and then I have, like, a little, like, bar panel that has how many followers I have on all social media, and then I have a little bit about how I got started, and then I have my unique visitors for my blog, which I, I really need to change this because my YouTube is, like, just as popular as my blog at this point. Then I have services offered, so Instagram posts, blog posts, the kind of things that you would be interested in a company sponsoring. Mm -hmm. And then under that, I have my brand audience, which were those statistics I said, like those percents, your women, definitely make sure you have that, especially if you don't have any past partnerships, because companies want to see, like in your email, you would say, I think that you would be a great fit for my channel because X, Y, and Z, my audience is a majority of women in this age group, and that's your mission. And then underneath that, I have past partnerships, and it's literally like one eighth of the media kit is past partnerships. So it's not a big deal if you don't have anything in that area, but a key like seller point to a lot of brands, go to their about me. Every website, most retailers, if you're reaching out to someone in clothing, but like most companies have a mission and it will say, our mission is to just made clothes and then put a line from their mission in your email say it's your mission or like you can be like my mission is to empower women in affordable cute clothes and your company says this this is why like I think that you'd be a great fit like it shows that you did your research mm -hmm. and that 
Like you don't need to have previous experience to like get experience, but also don't expect everything to be paid right away at the same time. Like either, like it took me four goddamn years to get one paid Instagram deal four years, but you know, like it made that deal obviously way more valuable to me and it was special, but that like experience is experience regardless of if you're getting paid and like you have to do like you have to get your hands dirty you know right. first like so take the unpaid deals like do it don't pay never ever 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 use the 10 percent off to buy someone's clothes don't do that but free like doing unpaid work like in exchange for products like i think that is so valuable like i think it really helps grow your audience and at the end of the day, like I'll start a video off and be like, I'll be honest, these clothes were sent to me. And then like five minutes later, I'll be like, this was an absolute piece of shit. Don't waste your money on this. Like, because I want to be honest, like there might've been 20 good things, but I'm not going to lie to you. No one's paying me to say that this is great. And if it was, then I wouldn't take the deal. You know what I mean? Like, and right. people can see right through that shit. So I have two quick questions. Um, one of them was finding your stats. Someone mentioned, um, social blue book. Is that like a good website? Because I know like Instagram will update them on its own, but I don't know if there's a way to go see like the overall stats. Um, Ariel, I think that we have less than like a minute, so maybe we should hold off on your question that way. Oh yeah, that's fine. All here. Um, but I think that this topic is so important because, um, we all enjoy making videos and stuff, but at the same time, we have to get paid in order to, like, you know, support ourselves. So, I think that this topic is so important. So, um, we'll continue this Thursday at 10 a.m. if you guys can, and if not, um, I'll post the recordings. And then also, Wednesday at 4.30, I have a workout class for you guys on Zoom if you want to come. Um, and so, sorry, we didn't get to everyone's questions, but... I'm really excited about everything we talked about. And I think, thank you, Lauren McKenzie for Delaney for sharing all of your tips. Um, I think it was super helpful. And it was birthday, so bring your hype, folks. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All right. I'll see you guys Wednesday if you come for the workout or Thursday. Peace. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.